my uh, the whole uh, agenda is uh, we are going to look at two uh, key things. One is innovation, and other is strategy, and what is the relationship between that, right? So uh, I am a big uh, believer of uh, back to basics, back to roots, uh, back to school kind of uh, approach to anything. So that's a similar thing I've taken here. <laughs> so moment you say strategy, right? What crosses your mind? Um, typically. Yeah, moment you say strategy, you have these things coming uh, across your mind. You have the iPhone, and then you have um, the uh, Alexas, and then you have the electric car from Tesla. You can think of Zara. Uh, well, why Zara innovation? We will see in a moment. And then you can also look at uh, Gillette uh, kind of a thing, which is more. Uh, so you have innovations which are. Uh, very disruptive, radical innovations like electric cars and stuff like that. And then there are also incremental innovations like Philips Lighting, which has moved from CFL to LED and things like that. Right? So uh, innovation, we will not really, you know, all of us know what innovation is, but we will be looking at uh, what actually drives innovation, right? Um, there are many factors, including uh, organization culture and, uh, DNA of a company and so on and so forth. One of the recent uh, research, right? I mean, one of the things which is kind of in the limelight these days for what drives innovation is the uh, Medici effect, right? So I'm sure many of you would have um, come across this at some point. There is this gentleman called uh, Franz Johansson uh, who has written a bestseller. It's probably sold in a million copies in 2022 languages. Um, so the Medici effect talks about uh, one of the key things is uh, diversity. Diversity is the driving force behind innovation. Innovation actually happens at the crossroads of different concepts, different ideas, different cultures, right? So there is this um, case of you know, uh, architects learning from anthropology, how termites build uh, constant temperature um, anthills in the, in the, in the deserts. They take that anthropology concept and apply it in building architecture and make buildings that does not need uh, electrical air conditioning. Clamps and toxin detection, I mean, instead of making very complicated biosensors that can detect toxins in the ocean, they, they just have sensors which can detect when clamps will open up. So whenever clamps open up, it is when of uh, toxin in the environment, right? So, that, that is uh, basically, uh, that is always something uh, which is diverse, uh, which, which triggers innovation, where the, when things are beyond the rationality and logic, that is when innovation is born. Now, well, so how does innovation actually help, right? So two things. One is, if you are innovative, a company is innovative, you get a superior market performance. So innovation is not just for uh, uh, you know, a uh, general good cause, right? Innovation is ultimately translates to uh, financial outcomes. So if you look at um, when Apple came in, right? So the, the mobile landscape was such that um, there was a Nokia was a the leader, then there was this Ericsson and Siemens and Motorola, so on and so forth, Blackberries and all that. Apple was nowhere uh, really a mobile uh, manufacturer then. But when uh, Steve Jobs decided to self cannibalize iPod, and he got iPod, uh, you know, he got a music player and then he got a, a PDA and then he got a phone into one device called Apple. Then it just shot up. And now uh, Apple is the world leader in terms of market cap at about close to 3 trillion. Uh, I think Saudi Aramco only comes next. So that it goes, right? It's huge superior market performance and consistent growth. Zara is another example of uh, innovation, which is uh, real-time fashion. I mean, the way Zara innovated is, normally fashion used to be seen in um, you know, Paris and stuff, and by the time it came to apparels on uh, market shelves, it used to be like at least several weeks. But Zara cut it down to a week, so as you see fashion happening on Paris uh, you know, uh, walks, uh, fashion shows, it used to show up in market shelves in a couple of weeks, right? It also leads to um, something called creation of new markets, right? One is superior performance in your current uh, landscape. Other is you're able to create an altogether new market like uh, what we call as a blue ocean strategy, which is again a fairly 
hot upcoming thing. Um, like you have the motion games, the Wii games from Nintendo, which uh, nobody knew. I mean, until it really happened that you can have a game like that. You have platform service based um, services like Uber, iTunes. You have a customer to customer model like eBay. And then you know, we have OLX like in India, uh, which are all basically creating new market segments. Now, how is, um, now slowly, so I would like to look at this whole topic as peeling of onion, starting off with, you know, at a high level and then kind of drilling down deeper. Now, um, how is innovation sustained, right? Um, why should innovation be sustained? So if you want to, if you're going to be like a one-time performer, just peak and then go back to normal, you're not really going to uh, substantiate uh, a growth like how Apple and Google and Tesla do it, right? Uh, 3M does it. So you need to have uh, innovation that needs to be sustainable. How do you sustain it? That's the core uh, of this topic. Uh, you have two main pillars. That is, uh, one is um, strategy and other is organizational design, right? Now, when I say organizational design, it talks about uh, the team design, it talks about team processes, organizational dynamics, culture, and stuff like that. That's a huge topic by itself. So today's focus is going to be on how strategy helps in innovation. Maybe at some other time, we can also look at the organization part. So we're going to look at the role of strategy in uh, sustaining innovation. We'll be uh, focusing primarily on industry analysis using Porter's five forces. Uh, we need look at the need for a competitive advantage and uh, why and how you need to sustain a competitive advantage, right? So this is going to be um, by and large the agenda uh, of diving deeper into how innovation is sustained. Now, before we look at the role of strategy, uh, again, back to basics, what is strategy, right? Now, uh, strategy is unfortunately, even in the corporate circles, it's a catch-all phrase. I mean, people say marketing strat strategy, pricing strategy, go to market strategy, um, to the extent that some are even talking about remote working strategy. So I'm not sure what is so strategic about working from home. Uh, so. So we'll have to, again, go back to defining uh, and understanding what is strategy and what is not strategy. Um, lean manufacturing saves inventory costs, highly intensive R&D creates valuable products, highly motivated team can deliver on time. Are these all strategy? No, right? These are important, but they're not uh, what is strategy. So these are all examples of uh, operational effectiveness. Um, then what is strategy? So strategy is basically, this is my own definition out of my learning from business schools, as well as my personal experience. It is a set of actions that is based on a competitive advantage to create a unique value that can generate superior sustainable financial results, right? Now, the, the, the highlight in strategy is three things, right? One is competitive advantage. Second is unique value. And third is superior sustainable financial results, right? It's not just superior results, sustainable. Now, when we say superior, see the advantage and superior is relative, right? So it's advantage in comparison to whom? So it is an advantage or superiority compared to your immediate competition, right? Or the overall industry average. So <clears throat> we understand that there are <clears throat> clearly two different, uh, there are key differences between what is operational effectiveness and what is strategic positioning. Operational effectiveness is doing things right. It's all about execution efficiency, right? So it is, you are doing the same things like your competitor or your rival. Um, they are good to have superior performance, but they're not always translate to superior performance. On the other hand, strategic positioning is about doing the right things, right? It is making sure you know what to do um, and what you're not doing. Then it is how, what you're doing differently compared to your rivals. Um, and then it is a necessary condition for superior performance. Now, again, uh, continuing on the understanding of strategy. So strategy has effective strategic thinking rests on uh, three foundations, right? One is, uh, first and foremost, and now again, please remember that 
uh, what we are talking about here does not really apply to multi-million dollar and the billion dollar huge companies. It can apply to anything as small as maybe starting a food joint, right? Uh, a food chain or something high tech, right? Or a startup in a software uh, sector. It can pretty much apply to all of this. First is, uh, first and foremost thing is we need to understand um, where to compete, right? So what we traditionally call uh, in, in the academic parlance is the environment scan. It is understanding the competitive landscape. Uh, you need to understand what is your, uh, who are your competitors? How does the overall landscape and how does your overall market look like? Then you need to understand how to compete, right? Um, so the how to compete is mostly to do with understanding the source of a firm's competitive advantage. So what drives the company's uh, competitive advantage, right? It can be many things. It can be technology. It can be key skills. It can be access to a distribution network. It can be experience. It can be brand uh, reputation. It can be, um, you know, so many, so on and so forth, so many things. Positioning, um, identifying the most important competitive threats to the firm so that these can be addressed properly. So you, you've done an environment scan, understood your landscape, and then we look at the, uh, what is, okay, this is where we are, and what drives, what am I good at? So the understanding of source of competitive advantage is more of a introspective exercise. And then with that and the landscape in hand, you look at where you want to effectively position yourself, right? So what is your uh, sweet spot? in this uh, market, in this uh, competitive landscape. Now, we will dive uh, further into understanding what is competitive strategy now specifically, uh, because when we talk about strategy, it is typically uh, mostly competitive strategy that we worry about. Now, competitive strategy is again, it is, uh, this is Michael Porter's uh, definition. So Michael Porter was, uh, uh, he's, he's a hardware. I mean, he's a Harvard guru on the subject of strategy, and he has produced great tools which is used widely uh, across the globe. So, competitive strategy is about being different. It means choosing a different set of activities to create a position that is valuable and unique. Right now, two things he highlights: valuable and unique. So, strategy is also uh, knowing what not to do. Now. <laughs> Broadly, if you look at it, um, there are two types of competitive strategy. One is, uh, so the, 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 the dimensions of uh, competitive strategy are going to be value and uh, cost, right? Uh, the price. So whether you want to be a differentiator, that is where you can differentiate in terms of value the end consumer gets, or whether you want to be a, 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 a cost leader, right? A low cost leader. So you have these examples when you're looking at cars, you are, of course have BMW on one hand and then you have Maruti. Uh, in, if it is a US kind of scenario, you have the Chevys and the Benz. Um, music systems, you have both um, is one extreme, which is more of a, a mass market uh, that they position themselves into versus, uh, sorry, both, whereas both uh, looks at more of the uh, elite uh, niche buyers. Right, and so on and so forth. Again, Zara is um, a kind of a clear differentiator. It doesn't believe in advertising. Uh, it's, 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 it believes in fast fashion, real-time fashion, very minimal inventory and all that. And it is not really into any kind of a price bar. They are more into being a differentiator. On the other hand, Walmart, if you look at it, it's like a huge discount retail. They are heavily into just the price part of it. And that is their strength. Uh, with that said, we will um, look at um, you know what what actually uh, it takes to draft a competitive strategy, right? Um, so, folks, some of this might be very obvious to you. Bear with me, um, and some may not. So, I, I thought I'll have the benefit of doubt and anyway cover them. Uh, so one of the key things, first things, as we saw earlier, is that we do um, industry analysis. There are multiple tools to do industry analysis uh, or environment scan. 
um, that is something called as a VRIO, where it, VRIO stands for what is it that is valuable that you have, what is it that is rare, what is it that is inimitable, means cannot be imitated, copied. And O is whether the organization is uh, designed or suited to um, encash that uh, unique valuable thing you have, right? And then you have, so VRIO is kind of not a very popular tool. What is five forces? I'm sure many of you would have used it and least familiar with it. Uh, that's a very widely accepted tool. <laughs> then understand, so the whole idea of doing a Portis five forces, uh, as we'll see in a bit is, uh, it is to understand where the forces are the weakest and then to decide the positioning. Now, um, then the third step is to understand the firm's competitive advantage, right? Now, uh, why competitive advantage? Uh, we, we, we did know so that you can find your sweet spot. So the competitive advantage, as I said, can be uh, uh, technology patents, process, unique experience, uh, a certain reputation uh, that you, certain geographical advantage you have can be so on and so forth, right? Now, for, for, uh, for instance, Walmart thought uh, that there was definitely their strength was their uh, trucks, truck fleets they had, that distribution network was amazing. Walmart did the smart move of power integration, they took over the distribution. So nobody could really, for that matter, even Colas, right? Uh, Coke and Pepsi, are amazingly good in that bottling and distribution. So, which is why that can't be, I think there was uh, Richard Branson tried to bring in Virgin Cola, but it failed because he could not beat uh, the distribution network that Coke and Pepsi had. We spoke, spoke about Zara, Apple, again, we spoke about it earlier, innovation, they were able to self-cannibalize their iPod to make, give rise to a better product because the iPhone was very disruptive. Chai Point, right? So Chai Point, if you notice, uh, our own Indian scenario, it's, it's a very unique positioning because on one hand, you have the uh, roadside tea, tea um, shops and then you have, otherwise you have the cafe coffee day and Starbucks, which are very expensive and the taste is not really great. So they found a mid uh, spot, right? A sweet spot where they can actually have a huge growing market and then cash up. So any of this can be a firm's competitive strategy. Now, um, arriving at a unique value um, that can yield superior financial outcomes. So, so with, with, the, with the understanding of the industry analysis and then understanding of your own competitive advantage, you look at uh, what is the unique value you can produce to give superior financial outcomes. So some of the questions you need to uh, we need to ask ourselves is why do we exist as a firm, right? So who would miss if you're gone, right? For example, if uh, 3M is gone, I'm really going to miss my, miss my post-its, right? So post-it is a, such a, it looks like a such a silly application, but that is, um, I don't think there are many who can make a, a, a similar post like what 3M does, right? Uh, so these are the questions which help you understand your unique value better. And then, you look at sustaining the competitive advantage, right? Uh, because as I said, it doesn't help if you are having a competitive advantage uh, that can be lost, right? Now, uh, four tests, five forces. Um, so the importance of environment scan. Uh, so uh, Kanchan, maybe uh, you can give me a heads up five minutes before the close so that I can, you know, I have a time to check. Uh, sure. Mr. Ramesh, you have 10 minutes left. So oh, request you to, uh, you can speak for another five minutes, then keep the few minutes of Q&A, please. Okay, sure. So I'll have fresh this. Now, Porter's five forces, competitive analysis can't be done in isolation. So it needs to take industry into account. Natural forces affecting the industry need to be studied to understand the business landscape. So why Porter's five forces? Because they affect the willingness to pay, price, cost, and profitability. Uh, industry analysis helps understand the firm's fitment into market. Now, um, and the Porter's five forces actually help understand threats and opportunities to shape the strategic position, right? Now we will jump into what exactly is this Porter's five forces, right? Now, so, uh, okay, now you have innovation done, right? And then um, you have a great idea in hand and you have a great product that is mushrooming. 
but you want to make sure that you're, you have a clear understanding of the uh, business landscape. So you basically understand the five forces, uh, natural uh, market forces that apply in a given market, right? So that can be a threat of new entry. So which means, um, you know, are there any entry barriers in the market? So for example, if you are into uh, high-end medical devices or, you know, something in avionics or telecom service provider, there are a lot of regulations and it needs deep uh, capital requirements. So there are high entry barriers. So not everybody can get in. So that can be good for you. And then you look at the bargaining power of uh, suppliers because uh, the suppliers, if it is something like, you know, making biscuits and things like that, FMCG, there are a lot of options. If it is Coke, it is like sugar and water, you can get it. But if it is going to be some um, uh, avionics or high end uh, medical device, it needs some special equipment then the, the uh, suppliers have a stronger bargaining power, right? Now, um, you need to take this into account. Then you also need to take into account the bargaining power of customers, uh, like in a highly competitive space, like for example, telecom service providers, um, you have Airtel, Reliance, Geo, and all of them. So the, 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 the customer is the king, right? Because customer can easily switch from one service provider to another. It doesn't really cost them much. So you need to be aware of this. You need to, of course, look at the rivalry among the competition itself. You also need to look at uh, threat of the substitutes because substitutes can be, uh, you know, if you have something um, uh, unique, uh, but if there are options, then that again increases the bargaining power of customers. Now, so look for, so, so the whole idea of doing this five forces analysis is to look for the sweet spot where, uh, the, opposite, where the forces are the least, right? So as we said, these affect the willingness to pay, the price, cost, and profitability. Now, not all forces are of equal significance. Again, in, a, in a innovation space, that is a, what we're talking about, the threat of new entrants is important because you have this great innovative product, uh, a great medical device, or a great um, you know, consumer electronics product. But uh, if, if, you, if it is something which can be easily uh, copied, or somebody with a deep pocket can pick it up, then that the threat of new entrance is always a big threat. Industry analysis helps understand the firm's fitment into the market. Uh, it helps us understand the threats and opportunities. And then, so what do you do once you understand all these threats and opportunities? You develop strategies to defend these forces. So which means if there are threat of new entrance, you create barriers, right? You, you create loyalty programs, hotels do that to prevent new hotel guys from taking over the customers. They have those loyalty programs, right? You can do things like that. And also uh, this helps to position yourself where the forces are the weakest. Look at those sweet spots where you can do well, right? Uh, so like, as I said, hotel industry has low end consumer customer switching costs by uh, loyalty programs. Um, then in flight, say for example, in automotive, Bosch, uh, there is a high supplier part because Bosch is the monopoly for automotive spares to most companies. So here the supplier power is very high. Um, companies are having to face that, uh, so on and so forth, right? Um, now for firms that are innovation factories on the long run, I mean, you can think of, so why do you have to sustain innovation? Because you have- Sorry to interrupt uh, you, sir. Uh, yes. We have another five minutes, six minutes left. So can you wrap up your presentation then we can quickly move to Q&A? Sure, yeah, I'll be, I'll take another minute. Uh, so this is going to be just showing you how uh, sustained innovation looks like. Apple is an example. Um, now, the key takeaway here, I would say, is that uh, you have uh, two dimensions to uh, sustaining innovation. One is the external dimension, which is strategic, and then other is uh, internal dimension, which is more on the operational effectiveness. So strategic, we did talk about portals, five forces, and the industry analysis. And uh, uh, this one, in terms of internal organizational effectiveness, you of course need the executional efficiency. You need a culture uh, to actually get your things done. You, you need to be able to move from being a startup to a product house. Many firms are caught up in a R&D POC mode. They are unable to grow into a bigger firm. That's it, uh, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, this is